there is an element of explicitness that we've never really seen before. Teachers are more excited. Yeah. Students are more excited. I see my role as being a student as well. Do you ever have to help the teacher with her technology? Yeah. We have to get to every student, every teacher, every classroom. Yeah. If we aren't doing that, then we really aren't meeting the goal of this board. Rather than, this is my agenda as an educator, this is now our agenda. And that's grounding everything that we're doing. Park Manor is a grade six, seven, eight school in Elmira, Ontario. We have a school population of 300 students, a grade six, seven, and eight with French immersion as well, and one congregated developmental education class. The community is a small town community just located north of Waterloo, but our school is fed just from the school community. Waterloo Region District School Board is um, approximately 60,000 students that we serve, mm -hmm. and we have over 100 uh, schools, secondary and elementary, yeah. with a variety of different organizations. We've really tried to focus on capacity building right across the organizations, and, uh, and, and part of that is drawing upon the leadership, and uh, we're learning together. So when I started in September 2009, the, the trouble with year one is that as a staff all over the map will say our understanding of some of these high yeah. yield tools, like yeah. gradual release, um, differentiated instruction. So whenever we did staff development, how do I meet everyone's needs and the staff? Yeah. So there was trying to build everyone's capacity, but then also how to have them be comfortable with sharing and learning from each other. We had an old computer lab and, and basically just two old data projectors. So we had focused a lot on building the pedagogy. And then, as you can see, I started to, to purchase technology for the teachers, the smart boards, uh, the document cameras, the data projectors. I think that the main strategy is first that I'm, I'm learning with my teachers. That was the biggest thing, is to be with them, but also model everything, getting them comfortable with not knowing the answer in front of me. This idea of it's okay to try something new and that I don't have to know everything right away, being able to go through that experience has made me be able to understand that, hey, that this is exactly what the students are, are feeling in the class. So what we've done as a staff, and we've gone through an exercise of kind of plotting where you are, and then seeing what's a small step that I could take. And then, okay, after that, that wasn't so bad. So now, let's try another step. Having staff that are supportive, that are willing to share ideas, has been a huge help in terms of learning. It's been wonderful to have the devices in the classroom because if you don't have it readily accessible, if you don't have your hands on it, then you just don't get the opportunity to play, to try, yeah. to yeah. be creative. And you really just have to be willing to, to try and know that sometimes you're going to fail and that's okay. You learn from those mistakes and other times it's going to be really successful and it's going to go well. We're going to focus on our writing for today. So each one of you is going to be posting a journal for today. By the end of that year, every classroom now had a, a document camera yeah. and a data projector. Plus, we had a number of smart boards in classrooms, yeah. but also still began uh, acquiring more technology as we were learning about our students, building our capacity. We were able to develop our initial version of our accelerated learning framework, and we instituted our BYOD policy. That was really year one. The Skinny on the Accelerated Learning Framework is that it is a graphic organizer that links teaching and learning to students. Students will need to develop 21st century skills, creating, communicating, collaborating, critical thinking, and citizenship need to be embedded into what we do every day. Reaching out a little bit further is the exemplary pedagogy that teachers use. Reaching out a little bit further, we then look into the rich learning tasks that teachers develop for their students. We've been very fortunate to have quite a number of technological tools, but they certainly don't come before any of the other layers, and especially do not drive what's happening with our students. And it doesn't matter whether I'm using the pedagogy or tools, if it's not gonna help the student, why am I doing it? So it provides a good filter for me. How we do it is we use the framework to help identify what things we can do as a staff, together as a community of learners to meet this ultimate learning goal for a graduating student. That's really the why, because if we have students come out like this, they're gonna be successful in whatever they do. So we've been working a lot on developing those 21st century skills, and today the big skill that we're really going to be focusing in on is critical thinking. So what I've tried to do is take 
the framework that we developed and now make it very explicit to students. So I can quickly and we can decide what 21st century skills are we developing for any specific mm -hmm. lesson and learning goal. So I use this board to really anchor the lesson, allow the students a very visual representation of what, how are we going to use the framework to accelerate our learning. Using the website and the Google form, set a goal for improvement and articulate why you've chosen that goal. So what's the learning goal you picked? Uh, I think I want to try and use more transition words. So I'm using this website and it gives you how to use transition words. It hasn't just been uh, talking about 21st century skills. We have created these posters that allow students to very quickly and easily identify what does it actually mean to them. So we've taken the six C's from out of here and I like to kind of work through things. I like to visually represent it. I like to also bring my students into it so that I can get their feedback on it to make sure they understand why we're doing things, get their ideas on how we can do it so that we can be successful. Communication, important for me to communicate with the students, the students to share their ideas, and I also feel it's very important for us to communicate with parents. Collaborating, as I mentioned, students are always a part of what I do in the classroom for our lessons. It's not just me dictating, this is what we're doing, this is how we're going mm -hmm. to do it. We're really trying to teach the students to be responsible citizens, and also how to use that technology appropriately, really wanting to put a focus on our student character development, um, creating, and then critically thinking. Another area that we've been working on and having those kids just, again, think outside yeah. of the box. So year two, we continue to focus still on the, looking at the pedagogy because we found, okay, we've got this great framework, we're using this technology, yeah. but if we don't know it helps students, like how do we know? How do we start tracking that data? And that's where we came up with the idea of the stickies. The stickies allow us to really differentiate our instruction. Each dot represents a level. So red for level one, yellow for level two, blue for level three, and green for level four. And it's a great visual representation of all of our students. So we'll kind of bounce ideas off of, of different teachers during collaboration time to find out what resources are you using? Yeah. How are you connecting with that student? What have you noticed they need in order to be successful? We were so excited about some of the great apps and the great things, and then we started realizing that it's the most simplest forms of technology that they're most profound. And sometimes it's just evaluating what do I already have and how can I use it more efficiently mm -hmm. to impact student learning. Technology can scare me because I don't feel like I know how to fully navigate it all. So it's been a real learning curve for me personally mm -hmm. and, and a journey into greater risk taking around just exploring different tools and how can I incorporate those into the classroom. And also just to really determine which tools are really the most effective for helping with student learning. Because there's tons of tools out there and you really have to sift through what's available yeah. to mm -hmm. find things that will actually help accelerate learning. All right, so today we are continuing to work on our lovely Exploring Explorers web quest that we started a couple days ago. Remember, we're at the beginning of our Explorers unit. The reason we're doing this is we want to try and gather a bunch of different information and instead of me telling you and you sitting there and just writing down notes, I want you to be the active ones that you're actively trying to find all of this information on the internet and using the web to kind of go through all of these different tasks. So it's moving away from me being at the front of the classroom teaching yeah. to them being more engaged learners and actually being teachers themselves yeah. learning at the same time as I'm learning. We all the teachers to show us or to just explain to us how to do something and then let us go and do it ourselves. Okay, and do you think of other students as teachers, for yeah. example, and how does that work? I learn best when I'm in a group and I can um, have the internet and we can explore together and share our answers on what we looked up um, on our devices. With the technology we've been given a lot more freedom to do things oh, on yes. our own. Yeah. But I think they're there kind of to challenge you and to get you to try yourself harder and to push harder yeah. and yeah. just to guide you along to get the task done but also to have a bit of fun and a challenge. In a sense it's not as scary as people imagine. And they really, in addition to accelerating learning, you accelerate changing the culture. Absolutely. And I've been amazed with how uh, willing the students have been to use that technology 
very responsibly. Um, it's really changed the culture in which there is no illusion about the role of teaching and learning. Mm -hmm. It's more visible. And that's the great thing about the framework, yeah. is that it articulates each layer mm -hmm. so that people can see themselves within it, yeah. and then they can grow in their practice. They can grow in the development either at a classroom level and even at a system yeah. level. Year three really just exploded for us. We had now 75 playbooks for students. The, the school was completely wireless. You know, if I look at EQAO scores for our grade sixes, especially in writing, I've gone, I think, at the 42 to 83% over five years. I can also look at math assessments and the OSSLT and can see that we're doing very well once they get to high school. Yeah. What is it that makes things explode? The previous two years had built the, the foundational yeah. pedagogy, the, having the teachers comfortable sharing. The biggest thing that helped is tools now in the hands of kids yeah. where they're starting to use them. The big key has been having the resources available to yeah. use, having the staff that's been supportive and willing to change. It's, it's been a lot of work, but it's been fun. You know, over the last two years, we've had a number of principals, teachers from our board and outside our board come and visit, mm -hmm. but now starting to share with system leaders to kind of grow the thinking. Inevitably, as we would have visitors come, the question that they want to know is, what tech tool, what app is going to be the best one mm -hmm. for us? Yeah. And we would always say, no, wait, it's not about the tool, it's not about the application. Because unfortunately, adding tech to old pedagogy doesn't make it better. It is this incredible relationship of all the aspects of teaching and learning that when fused together, that's what makes the magic happen.